Welcome to the Branding Boardroom, the podcast where we discuss brand strategy and how it should be understood, formulated, and implemented by senior corporate decision makers. Our guests range from prominent CEOs to accomplished academics and thought leaders, but there's so much more. They're also interesting people. Now follow me into the Branding Boardroom. Our guest today is Marty Roll, a world-renowned thought leader, global business strategist, and senior advisor to several prominent business families. He's an advisor to several global boards, as well as a seasoned global business strategist with 25 years of board and executive advisory experience. So I really thought that was, I was going into journalism. But I had a teacher at, at school, and, and he said, you're not going to go in and become a journalist. I think you should be a business guy. So when we had accounting and leadership topics and all that, he kind of encouraged me to, to go to business school. So my, my career took a, uh, took a different turn at that time. So literally my, my first part of my career was in uh, global advertising. So the first 12 years of my career, I worked with, uh, with global brands uh, from a communication, from a marketing and from a, from a brand point of view. Asia was just about to, to, to opening it up and to start to make an impact on the global world. So I went to Asia, whereas most of my fellow MBA students and friends out of inside and other schools, they went up to London, they went to America, they went into private equity in California and so forth. And I went to Asia. And in, and in fact, people thought I was crazy. What are you going to do in the Far East? That's a way that the British would refer to Asia. And I kind of knew that the future was Asia. So uh, whether there is a profound cultural difference that we should be aware of or whether uh, we are moving towards a more unified understanding of what a brand is and what a brand does. Now, I think when it comes to it, a brand in the end drives shareholder value and it drives impact. So if we take shareholder value, maybe in time of dollar terms and, you know, Brand equity leads to certain X amount of EBITDA and post-tax earnings and all that, because otherwise, why would you build a brand? A brand is a way to differentiate yourself. It's a way to express to the world why you are unique, why you can defend yourself and all of that. So it, it's kind of bringing shareholder value, but it's also about driving impact because brands are touching people's lives in a, in a functional matter. Your car drives better than mine. It drives faster. It's more safe. But it's also on the emotional level. So what does it do? I just like you. I just like your brand. Why Why do you like Apple? Why do you like Alibaba? Why do you fly a certain airline? I just like it, which is a very emotional response. Sometimes consumers cannot boil it down to a rational construct. Brands are, um, um, are more than anything else very much about an emotional construct. It's about a bond between the brand and certain consumers or, or customers. Often, when Asia started and when Asia starts to build brands, it sits in a very technical marketing department. So what Asia needs to get at is that it, it's about culture. It's about everyone in the company. For example, take Singapore Airlines. You think it's, um, it's a brand which is very well known. There's a myth about the Singapore girl, the stewardesses, which obviously has been the face on the front of the airline. But that's the least of it. Of course, it comes with a lot of training and upholding the standards, educating the Singapore girls and the pilots and the staff. But it's much, much more than that. It's everything in the company. It's a service level. It's a hotline. It's a quality of the cleaning in the aircraft. It's a food you serve. It's a wine on board. What happens if my back got lost? It's all the touch points. And that boils down to a company and to an organization. And suddenly, this is way too important for the marketing people alone. And that's why it needs to sit at the top level. And as a European who uh, has so much experience in Asia, I was wondering whether there were some parallels between the two when it comes to perhaps the development of companies or of the two societies or of the two regions at large that, uh, uh, that you regard as particularly important. When you buy a German car brand, you buy a car because you look at the functionality, whether it serves the purpose, big family car or fast sports car, whatever you need. But you're also buying a little piece of Germany. You're buying a little piece of German quality with the notion that comes with that. So society is a very important part of, of uh, building brand. Let, we got Asian marketeers, native Chinese who have learned overseas, studied hard, seen what other uh, people have done. And they're now bringing that back into the Chinese boardrooms and, and any boardrooms in Asia for that matter. So branding maybe has moved as 
almost like being a cost on the P&L statement, the profit and loss statement, to become an asset. And I think that's the way we need to look at brands. Brands are really assets. These are economic drivers of, 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 of competitiveness, but also of uh, economic value for a company to go to anywhere. Make sure more people get to China over time, because that's also going to demystify what China is all about. Thank you very much again for joining the Branding Boardroom. And we hope to see you again very soon in person. Fantastic. My pleasure to be on the show. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Martin.